How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now we all know the GPU shortage is quite a big problem for gamers and if you do find stock it's just usually way over a price and that is why Asus of Africa sponsored this video to let you guys know that they are on your side and they want to help out to get yourself your GPU and even a system. So what they're doing now is that they are providing build to order systems where you can get an entire system and a GPU actually get stock on and they're partnering up with incredible connection to supply that so in a short you will be able to get a pre-built asus systems ranging from a budget all the way up to high end now you won't be able to get this exact system unfortunately as a pre-built as for the motherboard there's only a few in the world currently and then also they're not going to do a custom loops and all of that but there are a couple of options with a different cpus gpu storage cases coolers and so on to fit your budget but of course you do also have the option of purchasing a part individually like the helios case that again we have here larger coolers more storage more memory and more RG be as always and this is currently just a example of build that they did for us which we're gonna test out a bit go over all of the parts and so on uh, for a bit of fun and of course a benchmark it to show all of the performance they'll be able to again get the gpu get the motherboard get the cpu everything the case and so on also if you wanted to you can even source a monitor peripherals and so on which we're also going to go over it's, they're just going to help you entirely get a complete system for you and again all of this is powered by a SUS and then also incredible connection so i will leave links in the video description where you can follow that down there and then you'll be able to get your build to order system directly through them again this is unfortunately only for south africa i'm not sure what's happening overseas but for south africans Asus is trying to help out. All right, so with all of that, let's quickly go over the system that they uh, built here. And again, something that you can uh, get with some of the parts or all of them if you wanted to. Uh, you can mix in and match it up, of course. And then get into the monitor, all of that. And also benchmarks to show you guys how the system perform. And luckily, most of the parts here we already actually uh, taken a look at. So if you wanted to see our review on uh, the GPU, the motherboard and so on, I will leave all of the links down in the description below if you want to get more detail on each part and also some other uh, benchmarks and so on and then i started off with uh, the case so this is uh, the rg strix helios case and it's actually a very uh, nice large uh, full uh, tower with actually making it quite nice up uh, for a uh, land or so on because you can actually you have straps here at the top that you can actually carry it around with now with all of this entire setup it's quite heavy even i'm struggling to pick it up but it's a nice addition if you want to go to the land and actually being able to carry it now at the front you do have your tempered glass up uh, front uh, panel with uh, the rog shining through uh, that of the lighting uh, you do also have uh, both uh, side panels are uh, being a uh, temperate glass as well just i uh, took this one off for uh, now but it just pops out and it's very easy to uh, get your hands on now you can also vertically mount your gpu you have all of the space in a side you i actually do like this as well if you want to you pair it up with some of their uh, thor power supplies uh, where you can actually also see all of your stats and so on on the power supply that's pretty cool so you'll be able to see that or just of course the name of your power supply as well you have plenty of space for all of your fans and so on making it nice and easy to install as well with their uh, release of brackets and then as for the uh, motherboard again this is one of the top of the range of boards that you can currently get i still think it's probably the most expensive motherboard that you can get that's why they just wanted to showcase it a bit more because it's just such a crazy motherboard so this is uh, the asus rog uh, maximus 13 extreme glacial and the entire CPU block with your VRMs, again, CPU, and then also your chipset at the bottom is actually entirely covered by a water block. And again, being water cooled, it cools all of that to a nice low temperature. Um, now, if you don't, <laughs> if you're not planning to water cool, this board is not going to work. That's why they did it, uh, powered by a big ski, of course. So you'll be able to do something like that. Now, of course, the motherboard is a bit covered, so you can't really see that much, but if you want to see a bit more and i'll again leave a link in the video description for my unboxing and showcasing all of that removing the block just seeing how massive that thing is uh, and everything it's actually a really nice unboxing i really enjoyed it. it's quite long but it was so much fun to do now as for the cpu the paired up with a one of uh, the best cpus are currently and that is the, the intel i9 11 and 900k which of course is going to be overclocked a bit it's an 8 core 16 thread cpu which you can overclock all the way up to around 
around at 5.3 gigahertz, which is pretty stable. Now we're not going to do a manual overclock on this board. We're going to show you guys the uh, AI overclocking, which is a very nice uh, from uh, a SUS or a G. So we're going to rather going to uh, do that again. Same with the GPU as well but you can overclock it quite a bit higher. But for the normal uh, gamers out there, and not as, not only on this uh, board you can do that, but on a lot of other boards as well, the AI, the AI overclocking is going to be enough, again, for majority of uh, people. And as for uh, memory, they did partner up uh, with Corsair here, where you, they installed 32 gigs of uh, Corsair's uh, Vengeance uh, Pro RGB uh, memory. I believe it's a uh, 3,600 fingers as uh, well. Nice RGB. I've actually taken a look at uh, um, some of these as well. The white version, I believe, they look stunning. So you do have that option as well. And then as for storage, we do have uh, two Seagate uh, Firecuda 520s in a RAID, thanks to the uh, Dim.2 uh, adapter that they actually have. This is really cool. So it looks like a memory module that you place on the board, but it actually allows you to connect uh, two uh, M.2 uh, SSDs, which is really cool. And it's quite a bit larger, but that just adds a bit more storage uh, availability, along with the other storage options, uh, the other M.2s that you actually get on the board. But again, we are running uh, two Firecuda 520s in a uh, uh, raid so you're gonna get a uh, plenty of a uh, speed out of that as well and that's for probably the main part of this entire system and that is uh, the uh, gpu which is uh, the asus rog strix rtx 3070 which is also vertically mounted and from all the GPUs that I've seen so far that I've tested, uh, the Strix models are probably my favorite looking ones as well. They're a bit pricey, but they do look so good with their new design. I honestly do like them quite a lot more uh, compared to the previous version as a well. The entire silver and a black design that they added and the RDG here on the side as well, it just looks stunning to me. Um, and, uh, can you pay a bit more for that? But it looks so good. Otherwise, you can go for the top model as well. That is much cheaper option and it's also very, very good. And again, we did do a review on this bad boy. So if you want to see a full uh, review on the card, temperatures, uh, more benchmarks and so on, I, again, we'll leave links in the video description so you can see all of uh, that uh, and uh, more, of course. And then going down again for the power supply, we do have the ASUS uh, Tough 750 watt gaming power supply. Uh, so you do have uh, plenty of options for power supplies as well. I do like that ASUS is getting into power supplies and producing more of them. Uh, I do again have that Thor power supply, which looks just totally <laughs> out there, which I do like quite a bit. Um, but you do have that option as well if you have the money, of course. And then for the final part of the showcase, and that is, of course, the monitor. So this is the Asus VG258Q, which is a 24.5 inch full HD display, but that runs up to 165 hertz, which is pretty nice. Now, it's nothing like 360 hertz, which is also an option from Asus, but you do have plenty of options for monitors. Now, as for other monitor, get a 1080p, 165 hertz but you do have all of the adjustments you can uh, tilt a uh, swivel pivot all of uh, that you have everything that you would really need power cable <laughs> disconnected along with that you do also get a g-sync full g-sync not upscaled free sync so you do have that as a well and just plenty of more you have your uh on screen display your crosser your time your fps and so on you do have your uh, anti-flicker plenty of uh, ports as well you do have uh, your uh, hdmi display port a dvi it's really everything you kind of need for a gaming monitor for this model. But again, they have plenty others as well. All right, so now let's quickly get into our benchmarks and show you guys what the system actually can do. Now I get a bit more of a showcase. It's necessarily going to be the system that you get, but we can show you guys how the GPU of everything. But anyway, firstly, let's uh, quickly uh, get into our overclocking on uh, both the GPU and also the CPU. And thanks to the Asus uh, AI overclocking, it actually makes it uh, so easy. So first up, we have our uh, GPU. Really, all you need to do is open up your Armory Crate uh, software and you'll be able to do all of your RGB, your overclocking, your fans, and everything straight up from here. There's actually plenty that you can uh, do or uh, sync. You have your game or library. Do you have uh, your profile? 
uh, settings here as well. Uh, and then uh, the main thing that we're going to take a look at is, of course, the overclocking. So we do have our AI overclocking already on. You can apply it on a single core as well. But all you need to do is flip that on. It's going to restart your system and it's going to look at uh, the control of the voltage, the temperatures, and so on. Everything uh, that you would need to get a high uh, high uh, CPU overclocks uh, for your CPU. And you don't have to do anything. Now, it's not going to be as a great as just a normal manual overclock. Again, I, I was able to get my uh, 11900K up to around 5.3 gigahertz. But this is, again, just an easy example for the average gonna assume or the average user with a overclockable a cpu on a normal rog a motherboard i believe it works on a tough motherboards as well so you do have uh, that option same with uh, the fan here just apply the ar over uh, the ar cooling as it's going to handle all of uh, the fan speeds and so on for you as well otherwise you can just uh, put it off and run in silent mode standard turbo max full auto mode and then you do have all of your RG be a uh, goodness for everything as a well. So that's a uh, for our uh, CPU, the Asus uh, GPU tweak a uh, tool, which is already open which is uh, makes a uh, gpu overclocking a bit easier and i do recommend that if you do get a nice gpu just overclock it a bit more just a normal overclock it's just going to give you a bit more a free performance and uh, thanks to the oc scanner these days it makes it uh, so much easier all you need to do is uh, click on uh, the oc scanner here on your preferred uh overclocking uh, tool or monitoring tool for your gpu and then uh, just a uh, start and it's going to handle all of that uh, straight for you and you have your app options uh, right uh, here now at around uh, what's 150 megahertz to our core but of course otherwise if you wanted to do a manual overclock as well to get even more performance out then you do have the option for that as well playing around here with all of, of that and then thanks to, to the uh, on uh, thanks to the display here on the side you'll be able to monitor all of your gpu uh, your clock speeds your memory your uh, temperatures your fan speeds and so on as well as you guys can see it doesn't really do anything now because uh, the uh, gpu isn't under load so the gpu fans are going to stay off but once we get into our benchmarks it's going to start up again all right, so first up, we're going to do some Cinebench benchmarks for our CPU and see what scores we get, both for multi-core and also for also a monitor our system here with uh, hw info and now the uh, cpu it does go up to around 4.9 gigahertz on all eight cores 16 uh, threads so that's a bit uh, more than what you would get just with a normal temperature wise we also are getting around a 67 degrees 65 degrees so you do have a uh, pretty cool uh, cpu as well thanks to our uh, water cooling uh, loop all right so we're done with a cinebench r23 for the multi-core and then also the single core benchmarks and we did actually pretty well and now we have already benchmarked the 11900k and uh, when we did uh, that benchmark on a uh, stock we got a uh, 15,130 but now we got 15,283 that's not necessarily a lot but with just applying a, a single button over a clock ai overclocking we got around 150 uh, points more now if you were able to uh, boost it up a bit more you can get around to uh, 16,800 so uh, you'll be able to get a bit more out of the uh, out of the cpu but with a single button not bad as all, at all all right so for blender we're going to quickly run our classroom uh, benchmark and just see how long uh, that takes now we already did it on some of the other cpus as well so we can, can compare it and see how long it uh, takes compared to uh, those all right so we're done with the classroom uh, benchmark on a uh, blender and actually did it really well so when you previously uh, did did our classroom benchmark with our review on the 11900k on stock it took 483 uh, seconds and on uh, our oc it took 414 seconds well now we did a six minutes and 58 seconds which runs out uh, to around 418 seconds so that's only four seconds less than our oc that we manually did on the uh, on our review and quite a bit faster like what um like 60 seconds less a minute or less than actually on a stock again with just a one click over a clock so not bad at all all right, so next up, we're doing a quick a crystal a disc mark and seeing how our a dual Seagate a Barracuda 520s have performed. And it's not doing too badly already. 5,000 megahertz uh, right there, or 5,000 megabytes a second right there. 
So let's see how that looks. All right, so we're done with Crystal Disc Mark, and it did a pretty well here with sequentials just below 5,000 megabytes a second, so 4,885, 4, and writes off 2,519. Uh, randoms also not too bad, almost 1,000 both ways, so pretty uh, decent there as well. All right, then next up, let's get into actually uh, some uh, some more gaming and benchmarks. All right, so Fire Strike first up, and then a Time Spy. Now we're just going to run the normal Fire Strike and a normal Time Spy, uh, because again, most people just run those. So you can see how it compares to your system, and if you want to have a VC system like this as well. So let's quickly see how both of those are perform. So Fire Strike done. We got a max. 47 graphics score of a 32,528 and a physics score of a 28,273. They'll be able to play something like a Battlefield 5 on a 1440p around like 115 frames a second. Uh, maybe Fortnite, over 200, 120 frames a second on 1440p. So not a bad at all. Definitely these cards, and if you want to, you can apply DLSS on some of the games as well. And that's just going to improve your frames so much more for 1440p and also 4K even. So it, it does get up there, uh, which is very handy. Next up, let's we check out a Time Spy and see how that one does. And then a next type of time spy as well. So we got a max score of 13,335 and a graphics score of 13,780 uh, 13, and a CPU score of 11,273. Again, not too bad. Alrighty, so the first game which we're going to check out is going to be Rainbow Six Siege. I can just play, play a bit of a game, see if I don't die instantly, because I, I'm really bad at this game. But, which is nice, is that we can already see all of our hardware specs on the display here, our GPU usage, everything like that, our uh, box speeds, everything, frame frames already. And speaking of frames, let's quickly check out our graphic setting so everything is on pretty much a max here and also we do have dlss now so that's on balance and that's balance between a performance also a quality which does give us quite high frames anything between like 250 to 300 so if you wanted to get a hello there yeah man show face you're still there Come on. There we go. <laughs> Just sitting there in the corner. Alright, so I got a few down at least. Let's see if I can survive long enough. Right, here's somebody. There we go. So we're still around average like 270 frames a second, which isn't bad. Nice thing about Siege is that it's pretty s CPU utilized, so thanks to the 11900K, getting pretty good frames here as well. Ah! Still around 260 frames a second. And I'm still alive. Whoa! I just popped it right in front of me. Four health left. I am so dead. Ah, damn it. All right, so we got around like 270 frame, frames a second. I died, of course. No, nobody's surprised. But it's doing quite well. Our GPU, our CPU is running again at like 4.9 gigahertz. Our GPU is doing well as uh, also running full speed there, 200, uh, 2,000 uh, megabyte, uh, 2,000 megahertz there, and the temperature is also not bad at all. RAM around 11 gigabytes. 
So that's it up for a Rainbow Six Siege. Let's quickly jump into our next game. And then for our next game, we're going to check out a bit of Control, which is a nice game if you wanted to see a nice combination of a ray tracing and also a DLSS because it utilizes DLSS really, really well. So currently, you're going to really see frame rates not necessarily at that high, but then we go into our settings and actually you see that we are running in 4K. We do have DLSS enabled. And then also we do have ray tracing on high. So we're getting around like 30 frames a second here. So it's not necessarily the uh, base, uh, but it's definitely uh, playable if you wanted to. But of course, we're not necessarily going to go that high. So rather we just go back to the standard 1080p. <laughs> we can leave the LSS on if you wanted to, which we're probably going to get some crazy FPS. Like, yeah. 120 fps right there i don't need to have the lss on really for this which we can quickly turn it off and see what frames we get but if you wanted to you can leave it on and you'll be able to get that high frame rate so let's quickly see if we do turn it off then let's just drop this also down back to 1080p and then there we go Get rid of these guys so we're still getting around like 70 frames a second we can do some benchmarks and see still ray tracing you can already see all of that glow on the walls here we're gonna check out the uh gloss as well in the gloss you'll be able to see all of your reflections and so on it does look really really nice like right there currently you can see it let's be turn off ray tracing and just see how that looks then it's gonna look mm, not as great but there we go Check that it had a bigger difference. You can't see yourself at all. Cool. Nice. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, we're again, getting pretty high frame rates there. Let's just look at that lighting from the, the ceiling lights there. We can quickly turn that off again to see how that looks. And it's gone. How big of a difference does that make? Now, of course, look at our frames 130 around there with the LSS off kind of drops in half right there so that's where dlss really comes into play and if you wanted to run it in uh, 1440p you have a, a stronger monitor then you can use that as a well and it's going to look so good it's going to improve the frame rate a lot just look at that reflection that's so so cool our quick look at dlss and also ray tracing up in uh, in control very useful so if you're if you're looking for a new gpu definitely get like an rtx 3000 and it's going to help out quite a, a, a lot and a lot of games are getting dlss now ray tracing not necessarily that important but if you want to get that high frame rate if you want to get like it's even like a 4k 144 is monitor which asus has that monitors i can't exactly remember the remember the name but it's so good um hdr 1000 everything you'll be able to get that Possibly with a bit stronger GPU, maybe like uh, uh, 3080 with the LSS and so on. 4K, 144 hertz. Mm, it's gonna look so good. Anyway, that's it for this game. 75 frames a second, roughly. Let's really jump into our next game. Alrighty, so for our last game, we're gonna play some uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Let's go check out our settings up first. So of course, we're gonna run pretty much everything on a max. And also, you do have a ray tracing and a DLSS now. So we do have that enabled ray tracing on right there. And for our DLSS, that's on a balance. So we're gonna see how much frames we, we can get on all of those. So just gonna quickly play against some uh, bots, some hardened bots, see how long I can last, and just have some fun in the meantime. Alrighty, let's see. Hopefully I... Don't die instantly, luckily not. So we're running around like 150 frames a second. Oh, something got him. Alrighty. I'm <laughs> not the best in this game. <laughs> ah, reload! Ah. No. <laughs> I'm just going all out now. <laughs> No! I'm 
so close. That was close. I need another sentry gun. <laughs> Yeah, I got a gunship. I need ammo. <laughs> Just crashed down here. <laughs> yes! Kills, not bad. Ah. Gotcha. Oh, another gunship. Thank you very much. All right, and then it's done. <laughs> All right, so not bad. Hundred kills, nineteen deaths. All right, so we're gonna run about like hundred and fifty frames a second with the LSS on ray tracing on the ten AP. Um, now I've seen that you can actually get quite a bit higher as a well um, if you run like uh, if you turn on the uh, ray tracing and so on we, you can get pretty pretty high frame rates which is quite nice on Call of Duty but anyway that was pretty much it which is all of the gameplay and everything I kind of enjoyed my time so um, yeah all right, so that's pretty much it for our quick look at just the example PC that, of course, you can get from my ASUS uh, built to order uh, systems. It's, again, going to be powered up by Incredible Connection as well. You'll be able to get it uh, there. I will leave all of the links and everything in the description below. So uh, this is going to be a really nice uh, option if you want to get a full uh, system and actually get your hands on a GPU and not pay it too much. Also, if you want to see some of the parts individual, like the GPU, the motherboard, I believe the RAM as well, and just some of the other ACC products that I have taken a look at before. Just check out the links in the video description or check out the uh, channel. There's going to be a bunch of there. We have multiple RTX uh, 3000 series uh, GPUs that you can also check out from ASUS if you want to see how those perform and get those possibly for your system. Motherboards have done a bunch of motherboards as well. So again, check out the channel for all of uh, that. So again, a big shout out to ASUS for sponsoring uh, this uh, video, helping out uh, gamers uh, more. If you guys want to get some more information i will leave all again all of this stuff down in the description below but that's pretty much it big thanks to everybody for watching if you enjoyed this video please like share subscribe and comment like always but yeah that's pretty much it so thanks for watching guys and i'll see all of you next time cheers guys